Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news bulletin today, Thursday, October 4th, 2012. All right, so we left off with these videos and um, the leaked video of free Syrian terrorists behind false flag attack in Turkey and exposing uh, Turkey delivering weapons to Syrian insurgents. So I wanna make sure I got that in there in that first video so that we can uh, cover all the stuff in the second. Turkish artillery strikes on Syria continue for second day. Several Syrian soldiers killed in overnight attack. Turkey launched artillery strikes after a mortar bomb fired from Syria killed five Turkish civilians. And remember, we just covered this from the 2nd of October, this Webster Tarpley video um, from Land Destroyer Report. Washington's terrorist claim headquarters moved from Turkey to Syria, and Free Syrian Army claims headquarters in Syria where they or were they ousted by Turkey, or are they trying to get bombed to plead for NATO no-fly zone? Then 4th of October, Turkey's parliament authorizes military actions in Syria. It's kind of interesting because they're saying inside Syria, they're talking about a buffer zone. Well, they've already had a buffer zone. They've already been uh, funding and, and, and basically supporting this incursion and invasion of uh, Syria. It says here, Turkey's parliament has authorized troops to launch cross-border action against Syria following Syria's deadly shelling of a Turkish town. So the bill that was passed also permits strikes against Syrian targets. So the Deputy Prime Minister says it's a deterrent and not a mandate for war. U.S. Secretary of State Clinton also condemned the Syrian shelling but did not commit to any action against Syria except to state that Washington stands behind, behind Ankara. Well, of course they do because they don't want to have their, they don't want to have blood on their hands. That's why they're going to have Turkey do it all. That's what I've been covering for the past three, uh, two months, three months now. So according to the sources, Turkish Prime Minister Erdogan's hands are tied. See, he has nothing to, he can, can't do anything says when he asked Washington in the last 48 hours whether the Syrian attack would serve as a pretext for imposing a no-fly zone over northern and central Syria with the U.S. Air Force participation, the Turkish Prime Minister encountered a flat refusal. So yeah, were they trying to get bombed to impose a no-fly zone? Then we have several Syrian soldiers have been killed in a Turkish attack. You have Ankara of Turkey saying that the attack was in retaliation for the Syrian mortar strike that killed five people. Now, just say this right out front, yeah, because I've already showed the videos in the last video that this mortar strike probably wasn't even from the Syrian troops. And then you have um, an article from antiwar.com carrying uh, how the Syrian, Syria's Assad, or they're basically their government, is expressing condolences, but they're, but they're also saying that they're taking responsibility. Now, this is from Turkey's side, saying that we've talked, we spoke with Assad and their government, and they, uh, they express condolences, and and uh, take credit for the attack so but that may not necessarily be true in other words it's a false flag because well they're not getting the regime change that they wanted uh, fast enough a top Russian general was killed by Syrian rebels while advising Assad says a Russian major general who worked as a military advisor to the Syrian regime was killed by opposition forces in August according to leaked doc documents published by Al Arabia so not sure if that's true either but just like uh, when they said that uh, Saad's, one of his relatives was killed a couple months ago, and then just today I saw an article saying that his uh, brother or something like that had his leg blown off. Turkey attempts to trigger war versus Syria. Turkey fires rounds into Syria after unknown attackers fire mortars into Turkish border town. After over a year of harboring foreign terrorists and supporting their operations near and across the Turkish-Syrian border, NATO member Turkey has claimed it has retaliated with military force against the targets, quote, targets inside Syria for an alleged attack on Turkish ter territory that was blamed on the Syrian government. Despite the heavily armed list terrorist organizations operating on uh, numbers on both sides of the Turkish border with Turkey's explicit approval and logistical support, as we saw in that video, the government in Ankara appears to have excluded the possibility that these terrorist forces, not the Sir Syrian military, were responsible for the attack, which consisted of mortar rounds the armed militants are known to widely use. Even the New York Times concedes it was unknown whether the mortar shells were fired by Syrian government forces or rebel f rebels fighting to topple the government of Assad. Turkey's immediate unwarranted act of military aggression along with knee-jerk condemnations from uh, the U.S. bear all the hallmarks of an orchestrated event or at the very least an attempt to seize upon an isolated incident to disingenuously advance the West's collective geopolitical agenda. Syria clearly has no interest in threatening the security of Turkey nor reason to attack Turkish territory which would give NATO the excuse it's been looking for to directly intervene. Also, they've been longing for a pretext to start war with Syria 
previously reported that Turkey was intended by NATO, uh, and more specifically Wall Street in London, to lead the efforts in carving out safe havens in Syria's north and to do so either under a false humanitarian or false security pretext. This has been confirmed by Fortune 500 U.S. foreign policy think tank Brookings Institute, which has blueprinted designs for regime change in Libya as well as both Syria and Iran. In the report assessing options for regime change, its stated emphasis added, an alternative is for diplomatic efforts to focus first on how to end the violence and how to gain humanitarian access, as is being done under Anand's leadership. This may lead to the creation of safe havens or buffer zones like Turkey did and humanitarian corridors, which is what they try to get, no-fly zones, which would have to be backed by limited military power. This would, of course, fall short of U.S. goals for Syria and could preserve Assad in power from that starting point. However, it is possible that a broad coalition with the appropriate international mandate could add further coercive action to its efforts. So this is interesting because this is what I tried covering yesterday as far as um, Israel reporting that there was Syrians, um, not in uniforms, uh, you know, running towards their border and stuff. Uh, Brookings continues by describing how Turkey's aligning of vast amounts of weapons and troops along its border in coordination with Israeli efforts in the south of Syria could help affect violent regime chains in Syria. They said they have strong knowledge of Syria as well as its assets within the administration that could be used to subvert the regime's power base and oppress for Assad's removal says Israel could posture forces on or near Golan Heights, which was happened uh, recently, in so doing might divert regime forces from suppressing the opposition. The Brookings Institute uh, document goes on by saying that uh, this posture may conjure fears in the Assad administration of a multi-front war, particularly if Turkey is willing to do the same on its borders and if the Syrian opposition is being fed a steady diet of arms and training. From October 3rd, you have Israel says armed Syrians approached Golan Heights tourist site closed. Dozens of armed men gathered on the Syrian side of the ceasefire line in the Israeli-controlled Golan Heights Wednesday, prompting authorities to close a tourist site as precaution. Israeli forces there were on alert. The armed men were not wearing uniforms. It was not clear if they were soldiers from the Syrian army or rebel forces battling Assad's regime. The Zionists are concerned that fighting from the Syria's civil war could spill across the border. Last, Well, that's what they want, I think. Last month, several mortar shells exploded in Israeli-controlled territory. Again, they didn't, never said who that was. Just like these people, they're not saying who they were. They were just saying that they looked like they were educated, and they didn't look like they were Bedouins. I couldn't find that article again from the Jerusalem Post. Then you have Russia opposes uh, the UN's security uh, bill anti-Syria draft on Turkey's tension. They blocked a draft statement by the UN Security Council condemning Syria over the mortar attack, supposed uh, mortar attack. They said they would continue negotiating on the draft, which comes as a response to a request from Turkey, who called on the world body to take the necessary action to stop the acts of aggression against Turkey. A Russia spokesman said it's important that a balanced approach is based on real facts that is exercised by the UN Security Council. In other words, who really you know, who, who fired those mortars? Were they the rebels or were they the Syrian government? So we'll leave here uh, with this paragraph. Tensions have been running high between Syria and Turkey, with Damascus blaming Turkey along with Saudi Arabia and Qatar for backing a deadly insurgency. And remember uh, this video. Check it out. No more Israel, says Kissinger. Then Qatar leads Gulf, coup in Syria. Go check that out. All the links are posted about Qatar heading up this new pan-Arab uh, invasion supplying weapons and stuff, airlifting al-Qaeda uh, insurgents from Yemen into Syria. Turkey says it, oh yeah, and basically saying, unless you guys start getting organized, you can't have weapons. <laughs> like like uh, like children or something, right? Or students. Turkey says it doesn't want war with Syria. Erdogan said, we have no intention of starting war with Syria, says the AFP. Then said on Thursday, anti-war demonstrators gathered in um, Turkey and Ankara after Turkish forces killed uh, Syrian soldiers, which I just reported on in an attack on military post, says, we don't want war, the Syrian people are our brothers, the protesters chanted. Remember, we just covered, too, that Turkey, that article saying that uh, Turkey's playing, releasing or unleashing the dogs of war that will come back and bite them. You have Syria not intending to wage war on Turkey, says analyst. Uh, this Hashim Jabir, director of Middle East Studies in Beirut, said, Syria tried to avoid for a long time any provocation or any contact or conflict with the Turkish armed forces because Syria does not have any interest in being involved in a war with Turkey. He also said the U.S. would not interfere in this issue because it is not capable of participating in a military operation against Syria, which 
basically confirms what we just said. They're not going to impose a no-fly zone. He said, especially within the uh, election year. Uh, the analyst also draws the same conclusion that these mortars were um, are mostly used by the Syrian Free Syrian Army or the rebels, and it was most likely done by them. Uh, White House, U.S. military role in Syria would cause more chaos from May 29th, 2012. This is back in the in the spring almost. White House said that it would not, it does not believe military intervention in Syria was the right course of action at this time because it would lead to greater chaos and carnage. And just like all the troop deployments and stuff that's going on around the world, a rare occurrence in the Saudi currency market tells you that trouble is brewing in the Middle East. And they say traders are expecting the uh, Saudi Arabian currency to depreciate against the dollar. It says people are betting that in a year people expect the dollar would be able to buy more of the Saudi Arabian currency than a dollar is able to buy right now. And that is something that almost never happens unless markets are getting really worried about Saudi Arabia, one of the most stable countries in the region. I just remember I, call, uh, I covered this, the part of the Qatari uh, pan-Arab um, invasion in that was the GCC, the Gulf Cooperation Councils and that. And also we've covered what, about Saudi Arabia actually having its own little internal revolution, uh, coup d'etat or regime change. Also, it could be something that many people have already um, uh, talked about, which is they don't have as much oil as they claim. Also, maybe like back in the 70s, maybe they're just going to break away from the Zionists in the West. It says, memo, state to expand assistance to opposition groups in Aleppo. So from October 3rd, it says the U.S. State Department is trying to direct more non-lethal aid to opposition groups inside the Syrian city. So the U.S. is going to um, funnel them more cash in that. And says here, cajoling and cahooting and drugging uh, and more as rebels try to draw defectors. So they're having problems recruiting people. And it says since opposition commanders say defectors have slowed to trickle, some have given up. And they said that they're using more desperate measures, including drugging and kidnapping military men to get them to change sides or at least stay out of the fight. Then here you have this Brookings Institute, which path to Persia report. The U.S. corporate-funded Brookings 2009 report conspires against the nation of Iran. The plot includes using terrorist provoked war, economic warfare, which we just covered, covert military and political subversion against the Iranian people. It says they moved around their documents, leaving dead links for anyone who cited them over the years. All documents cited by Land Destroyer will now be hosted online using Scribd and linked to that way. Options for a new American strategy towards Iran. I'm talking about destabilizing. Some of the methods are to simulate the need for change by creating instability that leads uh, people to seek somewhere other than where they are at the present. For example, you can make the current safe place less safe, show that which is held to be true is not, at least not in all important areas, open the doors of the house to show the real terrors just outside, get an angry customers to berate people for pro products and service, Show them the realities of financial instability like they're doing in Iran right now. The destabilization uh, has uh, begun. Show them competitors' products and how much better they are. Ooh, Coke and all this. Our drones are better. Reorganize to break up cozy groups. Give them jobs that are outside their current skills. This sounds similar to the CIA's tactics. The CIA's five particularly timeless tips from the simple sabotage field manual. Talks about be pleasant to inefficient workers and discriminate against efficient workers. Israel's Perez wishes for Iranian president to disappear. I pray that next year will be the greatest year in history of the state of Israel and that those like Ahmadinejad who threaten us will disappear. Then Iran and Iraq are calling for expansion of defense ties during a meeting in Baghdad on Wednesday that called for expansion of cooperation between the two countries in various areas, particularly in the area of defense. Then there's some people in the comment board who say this Al Haram uh, uh, source is, is crap and disinfo, Saudi Zionist uh, source. But it says, purported Saddam aid Iraq's invasion helped Iran. The highest ranking a member of Saddam's Assad regime said that 2003 U.S. led invasion of Baghdad has ultimately served to make Iraq beholden to Iran. Iran saying there's doubts over how independent Iraq and its majority Shiite Muslim population can remain from its eastern neighbor, the region's Shiite heavyweight. So even though U.S. never produced any evidence to support their allegations that Iran is using civilian passenger planes to send weapons to Syria, Iraq will start to search Iranian planes. Iraq says Shell denies oil talks with Kurdistan. The report drew angry responses from the Iraq government, which earlier this week threatened Shell with serious consequences if it signed any deal with the Kurdistan government. The next day, Iraq Prime Minister declines invitation to visit Turkey. 
And Kurdistan says Baghdad is holding back on the cheddar. They own billions of dollars, around 19 billion clams. So again, maybe a little payback. Thank you.